Hey everybody, I'm Jamie and welcome back to episode two of Field to Table with me. Um, so tonight we're gonna make venison fajitas and I'm just gonna dive right in. So I'm gonna turn on the stove to medium heat. We're gonna let that pan warm up just for a second. Um, I already prepped the meat earlier today. So what I did was just take out some um, venison steaks. I let it thaw all day long and then I just cut them up in small cubes. Um, I ended up prepping with onion powder, garlic powder, chili powder, paprika, and then a little bit of salt. Um, so what I did for that was I just took some salt, sprinkle it on, onion powder, sprinkle, garlic powder, sprinkle it in. <clears throat> chili powder and paprika, and then I just mixed it all in. I wanted to let it sit so that it had a chance to brine and really have those flavors marry into the meat. Um, so we'll just do a little bit more, mix it in. And we're just gonna go right from the dish to the frying pan. Next step is I made a broccoli saw earlier today that we're going to put on top of the fajitas. So what I did to prep this slaw, again, slaw is something that you want to actually make a little sooner in the day. That way there it has time to um, have all the flavors kind of set in there, mix in. All right, so how I made the slaw was I took mayonnaise, white wine vinegar, just plain sugar, white sugar, um, and a whole lime. Um, I ended up doing about a half a cup of mayonnaise and probably four table, uh, tablespoons of white wine vinegar. Um, I was actually told once to use white wine vinegar instead of regular white vinegar because the flavor is just so much better. And it really is, it just makes the coleslaw. Um, and then usually what I do is I just sprinkle in um, sugar until it just, until it tastes good. So I'm gonna assume about like four tablespoons of um, sugar. I'm like one of those people that I don't really measure things. I just kind of throw it in as I'm cooking. Um, and then I take a whole lime um, cut it in half and then just squeeze an entire lime into the mixture. You're going to want to take that, um, the mixture first and you're going to want to um, whisk it in a bowl. Make sure that you really mix those, um, the mayonnaise in with the sugar and um, white wine vinegar and lime juice um, just so that this sugar disintegrates a little bit and then put it into the coleslaw and mix it in. It just makes it um, a little bit easier when you're stirring it. So I did that earlier and threw it in a bowl, set it aside. Let's see, we're gonna turn this up a little bit. So I already cut up some avocados here. I'm just gonna add a couple more. So if you're not familiar with cutting avocados or even buying avocados, um, the way to buy a ripe avocado, you know it's like in its prime, is take the little, let's see, I already popped a bunch of them off, but you're gonna take um, this part off, and if it's bright green, then it means it's good to go. So you're gonna cut it in half, pull it apart, and you wanna be careful with taking out the pit. So I just, oops, see some of them come out really easily. You wanna just get the knife in there a little bit and pop that out, and then Pop that into the bowl. I'm not really big on a lot of kitchen gadgets, but I will say the best purchase ever made is this guacamole maker, avocado masher, whatever you want to call it. It's awesome. <clears throat> so I've got, I think I've got like six small avocados in the bowl. And then you're gonna take a lime, and the best way to get all the juice out is to actually roll the lime first. 
and then cut it in half. So then I'm gonna squeeze the lime juice right in there. I love lime, so I don't go light on the lime. All right, so I'm gonna take sugar and this is my little secret for my guacamole. Maybe about two tablespoons to start. And then I'm just going to start mashing that in just a little bit. Okay, so after I've got the sugar and the lime juice in there, I'm just going to take some onions. <clears throat> you can chop them up as big or small as you want. I mean, you're gonna mash them in so they don't have to be cut too small. And then we're gonna take just a little bit of jalapeno. If you like things really spicy, you can throw more in there. I'm not gonna do a ton just because I've got a toddler who likes to eat guacamole like it's his job. it all together. How I figure out if it's good enough or not is to taste test. Perfect. Okay, so now that we've got our guacamole, oh, actually forgot one thing. Just a little garnish, a little cilantro on top. I'm not gonna put a ton in or mix it in with the guacamole because we're gonna put it in the fajitas as well. So we'll just add a little bit on top just to make it look good. All right, let's come over here to our venison. Just gonna stir this in a little bit. So I like to be a little conservative on the spices when I'm adding it to the meat in initially. And I can tell now, since it's on the stove, it's just a smell thing. I'm just gonna add some more. I'm gonna do more onion powder. And again, depending on spice and what you like, you can add more chili powder to it. I'm gonna keep the spice down. So I'm just gonna do more garlic powder, onion powder. more paprika and then I'll do a little bit of chili powder and I'm just gonna stir that in we're going to prep our fajitas I like using these corn tortillas. Another thing you can do if you don't want to make fajitas, if you don't like to eat tacos or fajitas with shells, is just take a pile of corn chips. These are my favorite, as you could probably guess, because they're a hint of lime. Um, and just spread them out on a big cooking sheet and then start throwing all of your, top, um, your toppings over that. <clears throat> all right, so this is almost done. Just give it a couple more minutes. One thing you want to avoid when you're using these corn tortillas is you don't want your meat or anything to be too watery because then they'll just fall apart. So while we're waiting for this to finish up, I just pulled apart some of the cilantro that we're going to throw on our fajitas. And it looks like this is just about done. So I'm going to finish this up by 
making your fajitas. Start with the venison, throw some Cabot rustic cut Mexican cheese on there. We'll come over here. Add our slaw. Then we'll take guacamole, sour cream, which again is Cabot, if you can't tell. Supporting local, love our Cabot Creamery. Then we're going to top it off with cilantro. And we'll do a squeeze of lime. Why not? There you have it. Venison fajitas. Thanks for watching this episode of Feel to Table with me, Jamie. And if you liked it, make sure to hit like, subscribe, and follow all of our social channels. See you next time.